Shalom everybody, Yishai Fleischer here, and we are in Hebron, beautiful, beautiful biblical Hebron. Behind me, a 2,000 year old building, which has the mystery of Stonehenge, the beauty of the Taj Mahal, and a value to humanity, which is un unequaled, unparalleled. That's because this is the tomb of the patriarchs and matriarchs, the founders of the Bible and of the Jewish people. This is a place of pilgrimage for hundreds of thousands of peoples every single year. We're going to go through Biblical Hebron. We're going to learn about the history. We're going to connect to everything from Adam and Eve to Abraham to Caleb to King David to Herod and even till today. Let the journey begin. All right, folks, I'm here with Noam Arnon, who is the legendary spokesman of the Jewish community of Hebron, Hebron, and also a scholar and a historian of the Marat HaMachpila, the tomb of the patriarchs and matriarchs. Maybe, Noam, you could shed some light on the mystery of this building. This is really the beginning of humanity. As the Bible said, and ancient uh, Jewish sources tell us that Adam HaRishon, Adam first, the first man in the world, he was the first to understand and to feel the importance of this place, the holiness of this place. Because what he felt here was the entrance of the Garden of Eden, Gan Eden in Hebrew. This is why he dug the cave in order to return to Gan Eden. But you know, he was expelled. It was forbidden for him to return. Right. This is how this cave was created. This is where Adam and his wife, Chava, Eve, were buried. And then the cave was closed no one knew about that until Abraham Avinu, Abraham, he came here and according to Jewish sources, Abraham went into the cave where he saw a special light. He felt a special smell and feelings. He heard the angels singing in the Garden of Eden. And this is why Abraham desired to purchase this place in order somehow to be connected to this special, you know, special experience that he felt. Okay, we're now at what seems to me to be an incredibly ancient staircase. Noam, how old is this staircase that we're standing on? Actually, we are standing in one of the most ancient staircases in the world. It's as though it was built yesterday. It's really it's That's fantastic. Right. Well, it goes back to the early bronze, to the Ibi, you know, early bronze age. Such an ancient place, and you see, it's still preserved as it was built yesterday. Amazing. The age of this circus is about 45 centuries ago. I mean, 4,500 years ago. Okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. 4,500 years ago is about 700 years before Abraham was even here. That's right. When Abraham came to Hebron, this was already a built and very rich town. Mm. I can imagine Abraham and Isaac walking here, climbing the steps. And Isaac said, Dad, when this wall was built? And Abraham said, oh, my son, it's very ancient wall. Wow. It's 700 years old now. Now you know this, the steps, they led to the gate of the town. The gate of the town is a very important place. The people were sitting there. The people were gathering and talking. This is where the highest decisions of the town were made. So this staircase led to the gate, which was somewhere up there, of ancient Hebron. Absolutely right. Okay, so Abraham comes here 3,800 years ago. His wife Sarah passes away. The book of Genesis tells us that he's going to negotiate to purchase a plot here in Hebron to bury her. That's right. As we read in the Bible, Abraham was negotiating with the people of Hebron, the Chitim, the Hittites. They belong to the Canaanites, to the Canaanim. And he begged for them one thing. I want a cave to purchase, to buy a land that will be mine. I want to bury Sarah in our family plot. So he didn't want to receive it as a gift. And the Bible is going to record a kind of interchange and negotiation between himself and Ephron the Hittite. And Ephron is going to say, here, I've given it to you as a present. You're a very important person amongst us. You're a prince of God. Here, I give it to you in an honorific Middle Eastern fashion. I give it to you. Abraham says, no, I don't want you to give me any presents. Of course not. Abraham insisted on paying money. I mean silver for the place, for the land. He wanted this place to be his own. Not as a gift of anybody, of somebody else, but to be his property 
for himself, for his family, and for the people, for the nation that would rise fr from him and on. Noam, we're at a beautiful spot here overlooking the city of Hebron. And if before we were on a staircase where ancient Hebron was, Tel Hebron, the ancient site of Hebron, we see over there in the middle of the city uh, of today, we see the Machpelah structure. This is the structure that King Herod built atop of the tombs of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and, and the matriarchs as well. But I'm guessing that this is not where town was, where the city was in the ancient days. Exactly. This is Emek Hebron, the Valley of Hebron. All this area was the fields of the town. The town was here on the top of the mountain. Imagine all this area are fields around. In the end of the field, where the mountain begins to climb, between the rocks, there is a cave. And this is the very first place that belongs to the Jewish people in the land of Israel. And this is where Ravam said, this is the place I want to put Sarah. You know, he loved her so much. There's an element of romance in the Machpelah. There's an element right. of couples. That's I right. Like, that's why I like to say Hebron is for lovers. That's right. That's, that's right. right. You know, here we have fathers, but fathers alone can do nothing. With the fathers and the mothers together, they can create a nation, they can create a future, create mankind. This is what they did. Okay, Noam, we have made it back down to the Ma'arat HaMachpelah itself, to this monumental tomb structure. Uh, we went through Abraham, why he buried Sarah here and the rest of the biblical family. We talked about Adam and Eve being here even before that. Now we're at the Second Temple period, and this strange king, Herod, decides to build this building. Who is Herod? Why does he build this? Well, Herod, as you said, quite a strange personality. Actually, was a very ambitious and uh, by the way a very successful king he ruled on judea 33 years under the roman empire we have to remember one very very basic uh, fact herod was jewish his grandfather was converted and as a jewish king he decided to eternalize and to perpetuate the jewish heritage by building two very very important and basic structures one is here, atop of the cave of the Jewish fathers and mothers to symbolize the Jewish beginning, the foundation of Jewish nation. And the other one is Temple Mount, Bet HaMikdash in Yerushalayim, which symbolizes, of course, the most uh, important and holy place of the Jewish nation. These two structures are, are actually one by design. You can see the same stones today in the Western Wall, in the Kotel Amaravi. Right, they look Actually, the same. They've got these frames, the framed Herodian stone. The, exactly. So this is how he connected these two symbols to actually one eternal chain, beginning here, the forefathers, and going to Yerushalayim. And the most important thing is, this building is standing intact. No brick is missing. It's here as it was built 2,000 years ago wow. and still being used for the same purpose it was built for, to symbolize the fathers and to be a place of prayer, of worship. This Jewish magnificent structure stands here and symbolizes the Jewish eternity. Well, this is not the tomb. This is why it doesn't say Kever Avraham Avinu, but Tziun. Tziun is a marker. Tziun is a memorial. And this is really the memorial, the cenotaph of Avraham. It's not the tomb. The tomb is there in the cave, five stories beneath. 
this is a symbol of Abraham to make the people who come here to think about the personalities of the fathers and mothers. When people come here and they see this symbol, begin to think, who is Abraham? Abraham was the founder of human faith, of believing in one God, of understanding the world. He founded the Abrahamic religions that today most of the world actually believes in the way of Abraham. When you see so many people come from all over the world to pray here, to visit here, to worship here, knowing that somewhere the fathers are here, but where is the cave? Well, this question was mysterious. So for many years, many people tried to find it and they failed. No one returned alive. In our generation, we had the privilege to discover the cave. I was among the very, very few people who was privileged to enter and to discover the cave. It was, it was some 30 years ago, in the middle of the night, we opened the, the stones, we crawled in through a dark tunnel, wow. and then we discovered the underground cave, which is there. We crawled in. Now we discovered a double cave. In Hebrew, Machpelah. the name is Machpelah. Machpelah is a double. Actually, there are two caves crawling there. I found myself crawling amongst human bones. Bah. I was shocked. I was shocked. We began to pray. We continued. And there we found ancient vessels, ancient tools. When we checked them, we understood that we have remains from the ancient Jewish presence here some 3,000 years ago. So first temple artifacts. That's right. This is a second temple building. That's but right. But you found first temple artifacts That's already right. in the cave structure below. Now the caves were identified as, were identified as caves from the MB, Middle Bronze, which is equal to the forefathers era. We have here the evidence today, scientific evidence, of the presence of burial here from the time of Abraham until today. And we had the privilege, thank God, to be part of it. Okay, Noam, right now we're next to the cenotaph, the tziyun, the memorial of Jacob. You know, the book of Genesis ends with Jacob talking to his children, and this was not in the land of Israel, but in Egypt. And he says to them, don't bury me here in Egypt. Take me back to the tomb of the patriarchs in Hebron. And he describes again the purchase, and he makes a big deal out of it. And yet again, the Torah spills a lot of ink, trying to rem remind us about the story of the purchase of Marat HaMachpelah. Of course. Jacob, in his last will and testimony, Jacob decided to say to his children, one thing, take me home, return me back to where my fathers are. When they will bring me to Hebron, and will the, they will know where the location of the fathers, where Abraham and Isaac were, this will connect them to the idea, to the faith. You see, the children of Jacob are the children of Israel. We are the children of Israel. We are Israel. We continue Jacob. And when we established a state, we called it State of Israel. And today I feel that we, the children of Israel, return to Jacob saying, Father, you see, we have returned. We have come back home. We came back. All right, folks, I hope you enjoyed your tour of biblical Hebron. It's a tour that sadly not enough people get to see but you were there with me today with Noam Arnon. That was awesome. We saw the roots of the whole biblical story. But when we come here, what are we really supposed to get? We're supposed to get the blessings of the fathers and mothers and bless our children with that blessing. May we follow in the ways of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Sarah, Becca, and Leah, and Rachel, who's buried in the tomb of Rachel. May we follow in their pathways. May we recognize God. And may we always come back to our homeland, to Israel, and to Hebron. Thanks for being with me.